Bitcoin is going to drive or realign those American manufacturing, American producing principles that we all, uh, uh, that built this country up and made it a great country yeah. to begin with. Right. We, yes. we used to build cars that last forever. We used to build, build things that last forever. Our food system was high quality, right? That's what made America an incredible country. And I think having hard money will hopefully, and we're just getting started on this journey, but over a long enough lifetime, our kids are hopefully going to see that future. They're going to, and this is what, this is where we're going through. And this is very important because we've gone through these paradigm shifts before. And mm -hmm. I know that this is the paradigm shift that we're going through within food right now because of my understanding of technology and understanding of this new money system. And so once people kind of, that's why we have that slogan, you know, the, the I am Texas Slim Foundation. I am Texas Slim. Are you? Mm -hmm. What it means is it's the individual that goes out there and understands that there's a new money system. There's a new food system that's already been created. And there's basically a, a new health system. You know, look at our new relationship with crowd health. You know, mm -hmm. they started in the Bitcoin space too. So Beef Initiative and crowd health are now partners. And so we're merging Okay, look at that. We're merging industries. Tell me more about that. I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah, we're, we're basically, what we did is uh, when we had the Cattleman's Feast in Nashville and, you know, I've known Andy for a couple of years now and we've, they, they kind of sponsored a couple of the summits that I had in the very beginning. Those very, those, those really grassroots summits that I mm -hmm. did starting in 2022, I believe we had so many of them now, I can't even remember, but we had the Cattleman's Feast in Nashville they were our number one headline sponsor. And I've known Andy, he's known me, but I went to him and I said, hey, I want you to sponsor this event because we're going to have something called the Tomahawk Ribeye Eating Contest. And I know that Andy and Josh, uh, now he's with Crowd Health as well. He's their marketing guru. But what they're doing now is they have a new program. It's called uh, Crowd Health Carnivore. Okay. And so they're looking at markers, basically metabolical markers that are basically, they're working with other doctors and saying, okay, we got a carnivore crowd over here in the Bitcoin space. We want to look at the markers of metabolical health. These guys are eating beef. Let's go out here and create some new markers. Screw the insurance companies. We're going to crowd out there. So I love the idea, everything that Andy's doing, Josh is doing in crowd health, because they are offering really good solutions to people that are wanting to exit out of this, you know, centralized captured health system. And if you look at cattle ranching, you look at rural America, crowd health is a great solution for rural America mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm. And so we went and did the Cattleman's Feast. We had the Tomahawk ribeye eating contest. Sean Baker blew everybody away. He ate three like in 30 minutes and he was just bored. So everybody else was suffering the whole time. So he's very, he was very cool. Yeah. He was very humble. But, awesome. uh, you know, there's just a big thing right there because, you know, like I said in the beginning of the podcast, this is a great American uh, health initiative being led by the great American rancher. We're getting back to regenerative agriculture, which is starts with the health of the soil. Okay, with the health of the soil, we have the health of the forage, with the, uh, the health of the cow. With the health of the cow, we have people that consume that cow. Mm -hmm. So this is a lifestyle of basically integrating everything that is decentralized, everything that is about the sovereign individual, and everything that is about the health of money, about the health of our nation, about the health of our food, about the health of our soil, about the health of our cows. You can't argue with this, mm -mm. that it works yep. because we got four years that we've already integrated into this system. We don't, we use the centralized system. I had a very fascinating conversation with Cole Bolton two weeks ago. And Cole Bolton is basically the second guy I shook hands with, and he is part of the beef initiative as well. But, you know, this is, he, he basically just uh, had a merge with uh, two bar C hometown meets. You heard me talk yeah. about USDA and Luling. <clears throat> okay. That's the reason I was talking to Cole. They basically merge Cole's going on to bigger and greener pastures. Everything's still the same within the beef initiative, KNC cattle, hometown meats and everything. But he said, what people need to understand is what we've done here in the beef initiative is that we use the centralized system when we need to, because we leverage them as they leverage us now. And so that's, how's that, that, how's that working? What, what, what does that okay. explain that a little bit? Well, let's me. look at, let's look at this because we're going to get into herd sharing now, moving forward. We want everybody to start having access to build out your food systems for the next 10 years. 
so her herd sharing we'll meaning um <laughs> let's say say i own. i i would be able to say own uh, four or five head that i have uh some a farmer raising on my behalf is that is that what that means yes okay Yes, for the just kind of the generalization of everything. Sure. Okay. And you can do a herd share by going to like my new website. I'm going to do quarters and halves of beef. That'll be type of a herd share program that you can be a part of. Mm -hmm. That way you're paying it forward, and that way you're feeding it forward, and you know that your input system that you've invested into is going to be secured, right? From your input system being your producer, your uh, for your your for the soil, for the you know, the forage, for your cow, everything, the processing center. So you get into this herd share system. Okay, we're at the lowest inventory that we're we've ever had. Well, in the last seventy years in the United States right now with cattle. Okay, well let's look at inventory of cattle. Whenever you're in a regenerative basically system like the Beef Initiative is. We don't use antibiotics or steroids or any vaccinations. We have to use what we have to use because there's some very good vaccinations that basically allow us to be regenerative producers. And that's something like the vaccine, the shot for Blackfoot, you know, black hoof. That's something that's Angus cattle get it. It's horrible. But you, let's look at something like if you get Blackfoot, black hoof in a certain period of time, as you're raising that calf, if that calf is young, that that system it's going to be out of that calf system in a, a period of time. But if you have a healthy herd and you have a, basically a cow that gets sick, or you get two of them that get sick, it's not something that's going to kill the cow, but it's going to require a different inoculation to save that cow's life. You're going to vaccinate that cow. Well, in the beef initiative, what we're going to do is we're going to identify that cow. We're going to say, hey, auction house, we're going to use you for this cow because we know that you're going to purchase this cow. We're going to make top dollar for this cow. We've taken care of it, but we're not going to. It's not part of our business model because yeah. we don't sell beef like this, but you do. And you're not going to be forthright with it. Okay. We're going to use you and we're going to tell yeah. everybody that we're using you and the why behind where, what we're using. This is what we've done in the beef finish. We've basically, we're going to use the centralized system as they've been using us. Sure. Makes sense. We're going to leverage, mm -hmm. you know, that's what we do in Bitcoin. We leverage, yep. don't we? Yep. Makes sense. You know, that's where, that's, that's with all this proof of work that we've just done in the beef finish. And now we get to get into these herd shares. We get to get into a new form of education to the general public. Yeah, it's like, that's awesome. you want to talk about obligation. You just heard me, Texas Slim say a herd share. We're going to go feed a freaking nation is what we're going to so, go do. In a herd, that's what, in a herd share, would, yeah, would somebody be able to, would somebody be, be paying for that? the 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 say uh raising of that animal and the butchering that up basically up front with delivery x amount of well, months you, after that how's well, that all what what are the what, what are the do, mechanisms by how that all works well, well you do a lot of different mechanisms there's a lot of different ways you do this you got cattle brokers right now man okay. this is nothing new okay okay this is something that basically but a lot of the ways that they've done herd shares in the past is basically to, to get the top dollar at basically in the commodity market, right? So there's a lot of different ways you look at it, herd shares. Let's look at something that just happened over the last year, Agridime. You can look, everybody, all you Bitcoiners, look up Agridime. SEC busted them. Okay, it's a $200 million Ponzi scheme that they're still working with the SEC. Mm. But what they're doing is they're basically getting people to buy into a herd share program to where they can basically get top dollar and get returns off of those cattle sales. And so what happened, though, they once again, this happens because we commoditized our beeves here and we've turned them into nothing more than a stock on the stock market. Right. Okay. So if you look at what Agridime did, it's a great in theory it's fantastic in theory where it gets lost is in this fiat corrupted system 200 million dollars basically just ponzi scheme mm. and the cow was used to basically create that ponzi scheme we know producers that lost everything they lost everything oh, because man. of that well we're going to start doing the same damn thing agridime did but we're going to do it on a bitcoin standard okay it's as simple as that uh -huh. Uh -huh. So get ready. What we're going to do is we're going to do herd shares in different forms or fashions. There'll be different entry points, but it will either be for what is your why, your what, and your how. Why would cool. you, the consumer, want to do a herd share? Cool. Right? Cool. And so you either get to be a part of something that you know you're going to get four 
quarters of beef every year for the next 10 years, or you're going to go out there and you're going to be part of a herd system that is part of a more of a branded beef line that is now aggregatedly, aggregatedly being distributed across the United States of America. Oh, this so is going to be different. Exciting. This is going to be fascinating. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because I've been studying Jimmy Dean ever since I was a young boy. I mean, you look at how he did things in the beginning. Once again, what are we doing? We're going to get back to our roots, right? Yeah. Well, I'm from Texas. So is Jimmy Dean. And, you know, Jimmy Dean was first bought up by Hormel and then Hormel was bought mm -hmm. and, then, you know, just the whole line. So I'm going to really use that basically how it ended up. That brand, Jimmy Dean, is now worth $1.8 billion, and it's owned by Smithfield. Yeah. Smithfield is owned by China, okay? So it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy Dean is now owned by CCP of China, parts of that division. Yeah. He has 254 specimens off of Jimmy Dean, okay? So we're going to do the same type of shit in the Beef Initiative where we're going to create specimens of basically branded beef lines for these producers that have now... Now, now that we are to where we are within the beef initiative, you can't say that you can't take a branded beef line to market. Yeah. And so we're going to give these producers, I don't want to take my beef to market. Well, we have this input system now that is part of this aggregated, basically beef branded beef line. This is the input system. This is all you got to do right here. And so the consumer is going to see that. It's not that, you know, the beef is going to taste right. the same that it is in Texas, that it does in Montana, yeah. but you're going to know that it's regenerative, yeah. you know, the input, and you're going to know the producers and ranchers, and it's going to be associated with a branded beef line. That's okay? great. That's one herd share program right there. Right. We've got so the, yeah, so the herd, more. The herd share is uh, the financial mechanism that drives these commodity producers to the microprocessors and then gets it yeah. to market, right? That's, there you go. That's, that's really that's, cool. We're the other bid. We're going to become the other bid. Yeah. Because of what you have, you got a guy, a cow calf operator. He's like, I, I don't want to go to auction house. It's been a drought. Inputs, right. diesel prices are too high. I need another bid. Right. I need to take this cow to market right. in a different way. I don't have that right now. Well, or I got the beef initiative. Yeah. And like you said, I, I've got, I've got a certain amount of cows that meet a certain amount of quality that I could I could send in this direction. Yes. I got others that can go in this direction. Like you said, without yep. that option, um, you're getting bottom no. dollar no matter how, what you do. And if you're getting bottom dollar, no, no, matter, matter, what no matter what you do, you're not going to do the right thing. So you've heard Bitcoin is the new gold rush by now. As world leaders on all sides have endorsed it as the future of money, and now you're looking to get started, we'll show you how. It's actually easier than you think. First, go to your nearest Byte Federal ATM and turn your cash to coin. Byte Federal has over 1,200 locations around the country with the highest daily limits. Go to our website, bytefederal.com, to find the nearest ATM to you. Log in to any wallet, then create an account, deposit your U.S. cash, and instantly convert it to Bitcoin. That's it. We are the only U.S. manufacturer and operator in the Bitcoin ATM industry, and our U.S.-based live customer service is second to none. Go on, give it a whirl and don't get left behind. Click the link below.